You're watching City Channel 4, your window to our community. I was uh, an assistant in organizing this, but uh, really the credit goes to Bob Oppelger here. Bob is with Bicyclists of Iowa City. Bob is a local bicycle advocate and has done a lot of work to make Iowa City a, a much more bicycle friendly community and we continue to build upon that and so without further ado I will let Bob uh, talk a little bit about his work and Bill Nesper. Well, I'm not, gonna, guest. I'm not going to talk about my work other than this was the uh, a story in the uh, Des Moines Register yesterday and it talks about um, Des Moines bringing in the mayor from Minneapolis, I've given this story before, and how he was going to talk to Des Moines about making themselves a bike-friendly community. Well, we've won up them in a timely way in that we're bringing in the expert on this topic, and, and uh, I'm going to introduce Bill Nesper. And Bill and I have known each other for five or six years since I've been going to the bike summits, and I've been enough of a nuisance to him that, uh, that he knows me by name, and so I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to let him talk about bike-friendly communities. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks to Bicycles of Iowa City and uh, Think Bicycles uh, of Johnson County and ICAD in the city. Thanks for bringing me in and for all of you for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really exciting to talk about what Iowa City can do to become a more bicycle-friendly community. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our program, the Bicycle-Friendly Community Program, and why communities are doing what they're doing and some ideas on what can I think take Iowa City to the next level of being a really great place and why they might want to do that and then um, open up to questions and hopefully have a conversation about what we what we can do collectively and you know I'm here um, from Washington DC I don't often get to you know um, be in Iowa City so it's, it's a really cool opportunity to talk about what's being done na nationwide and, and hopefully give you some ideas uh, to make improvements. So the League um, is, the League of American Bicyclists uh, is the national bicyclists organization since 1880 and our mission is to build a bicycle friendly America for everyone and that for everyone was added a few years ago with really um, a, a focus of ours to that we represent more than just the self-identified bicyclists. Um, we are trying to build a bicycle friendly America for everyone so people who ride bikes that might not ever identify as a bicyclist, but people on bikes. And um, yeah, we were founded in 1880, uh, and, and to this day we, we are continuing to, to try to make uh, America a better place and, and, and give people uh, the, the rights uh, to, to ride uh, and, and, and hopefully make that a much better experience um, uh, in, in communities across the country. We work at the national level, obviously we're in Washington DC, so we're, we're trying to get better funding, better policies that we just talked about a second ago, better policies in place to make sure that um, that work can get done. Uh, we have a national education program, so we have a, a curriculum called Smart Cycling that is taught by uh, thousands of certified league cycling instructors across the country. And then the Bicycle Friendly America program is a flagship program of ours where we, we give recognition uh, and a roadmap to communities, businesses, and universities and states. Um, those first three, businesses, universities, communities, are, um, it's an opt-in application, so we, it's, it's, um, we encourage them to apply, and we'll talk a little bit about how the program works in a second. The state's program's a little bit different. We, we ask state DOTs to, to, to give us their, their, uh, their, their work, and we, and we give them direct feedback, and we rank the states every, every year. Um, at, at its core, the Bicycle Friendly Community Program is supposed to be a positive tool. It's a, it's a really big menu of actions that any community can take. So it's, as, as I said, it's a national program. So we're trying to, to create a program that um, can meet communities where they are and provide a lot of actions for them to do. Um, and uh, through this menu of actions, we, um, yeah, we, 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 we provide feedback to every community um, to, 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 um, to make, uh, to make places better and safer for, for people to get around by bike. Um, originally the program was started in the 90s, mid 90s, um, and, and it was much less robust than it is currently. 
Um, in, in the early 2000s, we, we added a lot more questions. We added um, categories, so the five E's, you'll hear about the five E's. Um, we also added tiers for award levels. Um, so um, we, we had bronze through platinum for a while, and then the, the platinums needed a new place to go, so we added diamond. There aren't currently any diamonds, but there are five platinum level uh, bicycle friendly communities right now. As you can see, no surprise, you know, there's, there's 267 bronzes, 75 silvers, 24 golds, five platinums. So a, a select group. Um, I use a slide to sort of give you an idea of the, the cr crazy amount of growth that we've had uh, and interest in this over, since 2007, I think is, is, is a really great year to start this. You see from 2007 to 2015, we've had immense growth uh, in, in those communities that have applied uh, for the award, but also received the designation. Um, so currently there are 371 bicycle friendly communities in all 50 states. We have five platinums um, and um, th they are Boulder, Colorado, Davis, California, Fort Collins, Colorado, Portland, Oregon, and also Madison, Wisconsin. Um, there are six bicycle friendly communities in Iowa. So Iowa City, top rank for the, for, for the state, so well done at Silver, um, but also Bettendorf, Cedar Falls, Cedar Rapids, Des Moines and University Heights all at the bronze level. So work to be done across the state. Um, as I said, the five E's are, are how we categorize our questions. So this is you know, the, the actions that we're proposing, the policies and programs and whatnot um, all fall under these five categories, the five E's. So engineering is you know, the stuff you built, the, the, the infrastructure. Um, we'll talk a lot about that. Education, encouragement, Slipped ahead. Um, enforcement and evaluation and planning uh, as the last one. So uh, at the bronze level, um, I first should say that about 40% of applicants actually get anything at all. So it's not, it's not a gimme. So you should know that. Um, we've had over 850 applicants. Um, and and uh, as I said, you know, it's, it's 371 that, that have received the award. Um, but at that bronze level, we're trying to see, uh, at all levels, we're trying to see a comprehensive program across those five E's that we just talked about. Um, at the bronze level, typically, there, you know, a community is doing something in each of those and really shining in one of those. But once you move, you know, silver and gold and beyond, we start looking more closely, um, not just at the inputs, like the actions that you're taking, but also, um, but more importantly, I should say, at the outcomes. So um, key outcomes like ridership, safety, um, and safety are, are the things that we're, we're most interested in. So that you can, you know, you can see in this, you know, averages for each of the award levels. And so um, there's not, um, until you get to the diamond level, there's not a, a threshold. Like, you, you, you know, if you don't reach this, you, you won't get the next level. But it, it's definitely um, looking at these averages, it gives us um, an idea of what, what we're expecting um, across these key outcomes, the rest of these things, and I know it's really hard to read, are um, within the five E's, the 20 or so most important um, actions that can be taken. We'll come back to that. So everyone that applies gets, gets, a feed, gets feedback, gets a feedback report. And so we, we, we measure the community up against um, these key outcomes and, and, and metrics. Um, and then we give, you know, customized feedback on what we think a community can do next. And um, I think it's, you know, one thing that happened for us, I think, not, not, not too long ago, I guess I should say, is, is, is that, you know, we realized that the bicycle, it, this is more than just about bikes, right? We, it's, it's about how, how bikes tie in to the good life and helping communities um, really build high quality of life. So, you know, what we're really after is, you know, how bikes improve people's lives and, 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 and trying to build the kinds of places that people of all ages and abilities um, can get to where they want to go and be with the people that they want to be with. And, um, and not only just a bike, but it's the way that the bike gets you to this cafe um, that, that, so you can be with the people that you want to be with. So, you know, bike culture is more than just, you know, bike rides or bike infrastructure. It's, it's, um, it's part of life. And an authentic bike culture is your authentic culture plus bikes. You know, it's not like we're trying to project Portland, Oregon on top of Iowa City. It's Iowa City's authentic culture plus bikes that is bike culture. So, um, I think that's an important thing to, to recognize. So, um, yeah, so that's, 
really is about building the, the places that people love. And bicycle-friendly communities are always on those top lists of best places to live, work, visit, retire, study, weather the recession. Um, Forbes' healthiest cities, you know, 15 of the 20 are bicycle-friendly communities. I think it's in interesting to note that uh, of the Mercer International Quality of Life Index, which is, you know, the international ranking for this, um, uh, seven, so there are eight cities on that list in the U.S., and seven of them are bicycle-friendly communities. Um, Business Week, 17 of the 20 best places to weather, out the, weather the recession were bicycle-friendly communities, and nine, of ten, nine out of 10 uh, of Forbes' top cities, they're adding the most high-paying jobs are also bicycle-friendly communities. And we know that you know, correlation is not causation, but um, there's a whole lot of correlation going on here between really successful, great places to live and do all these things to be and bicycling. Um, so um, another bit of good news is that uh, since 2000, we've had really a lot of growth in bicycle commuting uh, in the U.S. So we've had 65% growth um, across the whole uh, in, in uh, United States in bicycle commuting. And in bicycle-friendly communities, we've seen um, over 100% growth over that same period. So um, places that are making these sorts of investments um, are getting much more return uh, on these investments. And what the best places are doing is reaching the 60% of the population that we call the interested but concerned. They might not be self-identified bicyclists, but they're people that want to bike and would like to bike, but the communities need to make it um, safer and feel safer um, and, uh, and, and to make bike trips um, feel more doable. Um, and so the places that are getting the most return are doing that. So we have, you know, the strong and the fearless set um, which make up, uh, go back to that, um, that, that small sliver of the population, maybe together with the confident and enthused make up maybe 7%. Um, these folks are covered and, uh, by, by, by any bicycle-friendly community. Um, they, you know, they, they can you know, take the lane and, 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 and be, be comfortable in a lot of different situations. Um, and, and of course, these folks are our friends and our co you know, members of our, our advocacy groups, and we need them um, uh, as, as a core constituent group of our bike advocacy. But it's important um, that we reach this other group of people, again, who, um, for, who for bicycling, it's, 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 it, bicycling is, it isn't as maybe a big part of their life, let's say. They, they want to go on a ride. This is in Huntsville, Alabama. You know, they want to take the bike sharing bike and, and a tool around town, but they might, again, not call themselves bicyclists. Um, people that, you know, might never go on a century ride, might never ride across Iowa. We, we might be able to get them there. Um, but, but, you know, that, that, that just, uh, you, know, where, you know, they want to do a 10 mile ride or they want to do a five mile ride that, that ends up at this, this cool event. So again, we're looking at these outcomes, um, and, and I think in here, and we can get into a little bit more detail as we go, um, you'll find the actions that help, help us get to those outcomes. And in Iowa City, um, I, looked at, I looked at, I should say, the community first applied in 2007 and got an honorable mention, and then applied again in 2009, I believe, and got a bronze, and then got a silver in 2013. So now we're looking at shooting to, to gold. And I'm really happy to hear that the city um, and the city staff are, and, and the city leadership are engaged and, and want to make that happen. And shooting for gold is a, is a, is a real, um, I think, a real attainable target. And shooting for platinum and beyond, of course, is as well. Uh, but it's going to take the people in this room and all of your friends and the business community that we spoke to earlier today um, uh, to, to, to help make that happen. But it is doable. So on those outcomes, um, I just set, set Iowa City up, up next to some other high-performing uh, bicycle-friendly communities in the area. So Bloomington is a gold. Um, Madison is, uh, they were gold and they just moved to platinum. Minneapolis is a gold and Fort Collins while not in the Midwest, I think is, is a good example of a, of a college town that while bigger than Iowa City, I think has a lot of, uh, has a lot of similarities that you might um, be able to look at. So as you'll see, you know, on, 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 on bicycle commuters, 4.3 here in Iowa City, 4.2 in Bloomington, on, on this metric, you know, 
doing pretty well um, on, on, on serious crashes and fatalities, also doing very well in Iowa City. So I think, it's, I think the, the community should be, you know, should be proud of that. Um, but as we look towards other things, I think we have to, we have to um, um, I think we can bump this number up so they can be closer to, to uh, Fort Collins with, I think, um, a few actions. I mean, a number of actions that are going to take, but, uh, but uh, sorry, you're trying to, uh, sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. Bloomington, Indiana is a, plat is, is a gold bicycle friendly community. Okay. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot, yeah. Illinois, and, they have, and there's a Minnesota too, I should have. Oh. I'm sorry, yeah, I should, I should have said. Bloomington, Indiana. <laughs> same size as, so I think it's a really good, it's a good, uh, the same size as Iowa City. Um, also Midwest, I think they, they would call themselves Midwest. Um, uh, Big Ten, right? I'm, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's cyclical, but this is taken from a five-year average. Yeah. It's 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 from it's from your bike commuter data, so it's within that it, because the number's so tiny oh, when yeah yeah, oh, yeah yeah when you when you yeah exactly. But I mean it's, yeah, they're not counted very well usually. Exactly. <laughs> Good point. So yeah, so those numbers, this number's across the top. I should say you know this is from the U.S. Census Bureau, and it's equally. The thing is that it's apples to apples around the country. So it's like not the best measure. It's the U.S. Census American Community Survey Journey to Work. Well, that's, what it, that's, that's what that number is. That's what that number is. Well, unless you do a survey or you do actual counts, and I'm sure we can get into the data analysis. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, we, well, no, we totally can. But but this should be known that this is like this equally m miserable measure across the entire <laughs> country. Okay, so for those of you academics in the, in the crowd, so this is the, you know, so these are all coming from the same place. And that's because it's the only thing we have consistently around the country. So we have to, to measure apples to apples, we do it with this number. So um, going for gold, these are, the, these are the things that came out of the last review, but also remain true with a little bit of tweaks um, from the 2013 review. We require a, a renewal every four years, I should say that. So you're up for renewal in 2017 uh, in, in Iowa City. Um, so going for gold, I think number one, um, a more connected all ages and abilities bicycling network. And we'll talk a lot about that. Closing the gaps, building all ages um, and abilities, you know, in everything you build, looking at major streets and, um, and, and putting bike facilities on major streets, I think is gonna, is gonna go a long way, as will bike boulevard. So really optimizing your quiet streets. Um, next, expanding the outreach, just general education to the, gen you know, to the public about bicycling and, and uh, the rights and responsibilities of people um, in, in, uh, in the transportation system. Working closely with the University of Iowa to offer classes, so that was one thing, you know, there's, there's a lot of youth bicycling education happening here, but there's not a lot of adult bicycling education um, at the university or, um, you know, there's not a lot of offerings um, for people to get the confidence, you know, if, if, um, to ride so through the classes. Um, partnering with law enforcement, that was a missing piece. We'll talk a little bit about that. And also um, improving the measurement, so doing a better job of, of counting and, and uh, b surveys. I think if, if, we're, if we're aiming towards gold and beyond, that's like the platinum standard is, is really finding out um, how many people are actually riding on a regular basis and being able to communicate that progress. So, First, um, the connected legible network. So there's, you know, there's a complete streets policy, of course. That should be, um, that should be a, a really good tool uh, to, to, to improve your roads across the board. I know we're doing um, road diets here, and, and, and I think that that's great. Um, I think, um, again, coming to every project with, with um, better design standards um, is going gonna, is gonna to be really important, making sure that you're closing the gaps. And we'll talk a little bit about bike parking as well. So good guidance. There's great guidance out there now um, uh, to, to do these um, through NACTO, um, which has been endorsed by USDOT you know, uh, as, as, um, as a guidance to look at. You know, we, we've really, over the last 
six years, I think, within the practice have, have, um, have gotten a lot more tools, including this, and then also the Federal Highway Administration itself has put out a separated bikeway design um, guide. So there, there are, gr there are good, there's good guidance that can be um, given um, uh, to your engineers to make sure that when, you, when you're building roads that you're building them right. And I think um, either adopting one of these guides or putting this guidance in your adopted design guide, but adopting it and making sure that whenever a road is built, that it's built to these spe specifications. Um, I also think adding a facility selection matrix. So this is a little bit into the weeds and, um, and wonkiness, but, but this is from Seattle, which is a gold bicycle friendly community. Um, I think this is, this, is the, uh, this is a great tool for, again, if you're looking at you're looking at roads when you're when you're choosing what kind of bike facility you're going to put on it again to reach that interested but concerned you want to look at two things um, mainly which is um, speed of, of automobile traffic and volume um, of, of automobile traffic so um, determining what those things are then you then you can then figure out which you know is it just going to be a shadow on this road or are you going to put a bike lane is it a quiet street uh, like a like a bike boulevard um, or is it a major street that you need to have um, a protected bike lane or something on that to, again to reach the interest of a concerned? So I think at the very, um, I think one of the the low hanging fruit I think in in, in Iowa City um, is your good neighborhood network of quiet quiet low volume streets, and so um, optimizing those for bicycle travel um, and making bike boulevards like that, which I'm going to talk a lot about Madison and. Uh, uh, in Mi Minneapolis and Bloomington, I think um, those there's a lot of really good examples that you can get from from those that are uh, you know in your region. So um, these things are being done in all those places. Um, this is this is in California. This is in San Luis Obispo. Um, but you know a lot of great streets that you can turn into uh, um, bike routes, and so you do that with really paint and signage um, and. Places like Minneapolis have gone a little bit further and they've, they've put out guidance to explain what bike boulevards to the neighbors, um, how drivers should you know, drive on them. You can see in this, in this example, their, their bike boulevard um, uh, stenciling, you know, the, the paint that they're using for their bike boulevard branding is a little bit different than the one we just saw, but you know, the concept is still the same. You're, you're welcoming bicycles to come through these quiet streets and, uh, and getting people to where they want to go. And one of the ways that you get people to where they want to go is, is provide wayfinding. So um, you're, you're, you're telling folks that, you know, this, you know, shopping center is half a mile that way and uh, school is to the left and, and down this. And this is, you're on the such and such neighborhood bike boulevard, you know, so naming and branding of these things um, and, and giving people wayfinding signage goes a long way. And it's really key to making a great, uh, Bicycle boulevards as part of your lar larger connected network. So right sizing of your streets. So doing road diets. Uh, I know that you're doing a few here. I mean, I, I came in on Clinton. I think it you know seems like a perfect candidate for a road diet to me. Um, I don't. I, full disclosure, I did not see what the traffic volumes are. I did not read the reports, but it seemed like a lot of capacity. I don't know. Um, but but those are the kinds of streets that seem that you that you that you want to make big iconic sort of welcoming bike facilities um, that, that, that really um, tell people, hey, you can, this is a place to ride. So, so that was one of the things that was missing on the previous application, the Bicycle Friendly Community application, was that there, there, there weren't a lot of um, uh, major streets that had bike facilities on them. I'll go back, um, excuse me for a second, to go back to this, to this, but on this, on this slide, you'll see the, av this is arterial streets with bike lanes or better. Um, the average silver has 45% of those arterial streets have bike lanes or better on them. And it's like 10% here. So, so that's why we think that if, if you were to turn your 10 to 45, I think your 4.3% ridership goes up pretty quickly because you're connecting the dots for the interested but concerned. So the average gold has 65%. Um, of arterial streets with bike facilities on them. So major streets are a big deal. And so doing this right sizing and, and getting these streets right um, are, gonna, are gonna pay big dividends. So this is, um, 
the next facility, which is um, a, a buffered bike lane. So you have traditional bike lanes with the single stripe. We just saw those. Buffered bike lane is an additional space. Again, just paint, um, but it does provide a level of comfort and again, welcoming the, that set of folks that we're really trying to get. Um, here is a buffered bike lane in Madison, Wisconsin. And here is one, you can barely see it, but here's one in, um, see the buffer area. You know, a little bit different on each of these, but um, same concept. They're giving a little bit of extra space and a little bit of more perceived safety and, you know, safety um, for, for the cyclist. This is in Bloomington, Indiana. This is a protected bike lane that's parking protected. So here we have paint, bike lane paint, and then parked car um, uh, to, to provide some protection. That's directly from the NACTO guide. Here is um, a curb protected bike lane, cycle track. This is in Madison. So there's, there's a little bit of a curb there. And um, you see some green paint here in this conflict zone where you have turning vehicles. These are the kinds of things that I think, you know, that if Iowa City could adopt, I think you'd, you know, get, get some really good um, return. Um, this is a two-way cycle track, so protected, protected bike lane, two ways. So um, here's an example of that in Austin, Texas. So this is, um, you know, they've, they've taken a lane and, and they've turned this into two-way and you have, you know, children using this. Uh, again, green paint in the conflict area there. This is a... Uh, Indianapolis, um, Indiana, again, two-way protected bike lane. There's a little bit of, you know, they, they have posts here and uh, some curb protection. But again, really opening up areas to a totally different set of people. Uh, the, there's a couple of slides from Indianapolis to show you some before and afters, how, how two-way, you know, how this kind of infrastructure could really change the look. So that's a before and after, and a, again, a two-way bike, bike way, and then here it is before, another one, and after. So, yeah, so you have some road narrowing, but you know, when the, when the numbers come through, what you have here is a much, not only a much better place for people to ride bikes, but also for people at, to go to these stores, much better pedestrian space, much better urban uh, environment. So, you know, as these things have gone in, you know, we've gotten some good numbers and uh, good survey uh, information back on, on what people think. And so this, uh, this is a, a two-way cycle track um, in Washington, D.C. Um, you can see that it's, it's paint and these little uh, posts, uh, flexible plastic posts. Um, you know, seems pretty simple. I, I was really... Uh, um, I was really impressed like when they put this in because um, these numbers really do seem <laughs> yeah, to, to have happened. Um, bicycle ridership when this went in went up 200% after installation uh, and 80% of the residents along the cycle track said it was a real amenity uh, and, and that it, it, it was a valuable asset to the neighborhood. And um, the same has been found in other cities. So in New York City where um, these treatments is a cycle track protected parking protected bike lane, so you see the, the car here. Um, in this, on this corridor, um, not only did we see you know, more people riding, um, we saw 80% decrease in injuries on all, um, sorry, 58% decrease in injuries for all uh, street users, 49% increase in retail sales. So along, along, along here where there's a better uh, bicycle and pedestrian environment, um, people were spending more money. And as it turns out, bicyclists and pedestrians were spending more money per visit. They were, well, they were, they were spending more money because they were visiting more often um, than, than people arriving by other modes. So it's, um, it's both good for economic, you know, economics and also safety, and also just help, helping um, people go by bike and more equitably connect to their, to their communities. Um, okay, so a couple of little fun things from those cities that I mentioned, um, I think that are, you know, again, you know, not huge investments, but make a huge difference. So here's a, you know, a busy road with, um, you have like a, a, a trail bike boulevard going on through here in the middle of town. I think it's a trail. Um, this is in Bloomington. So you have green paint here and then you have a, uh, an actuated signal. So if you, you know, you get on this symbol here, this, um, this, uh, uh, bicycle signal head goes off and gives you your own phase. So you get to 
make this crossing. Um, here's something from Madison, Wisconsin. So this is connecting a trail. This is again, this is what platinum level communities do. They figure out how to get people on, on the trail through a really busy intersection. So you'll see here, here's the trail, here's the trail or the path. So signal, 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 basically taking people across. It's, um, yeah, and it's pretty iconic too. I should go back because it's right in front of, I think, you know, these, that team right in front of Camp Randall. Uh, you know, so this, I think that's your other, isn't that your competition that hangs out in that, hangs out in that building? Um, yeah, so um, that's another bit of like investment. But here's a, I mean, relatively <laughs> simple but like really thoughtful way of uh, welcoming cyclists. So this is taking somebody, this is a, this is a bicycle left turn pocket here. Um, so they just made a little space so that, so this cyclist could get into here, which is a bike boulevard. So it's, it's the little things. Um, this is a uh, advisory bike lane. So this is a treatment that we're seeing here and there. This is in uh, Bloomington, Indiana, but um, we see them in a few places. This uh, is like on a, on a lower speed, so under 25 miles an hour, low volume, so under 5,000 or 6,000 cars per day street. Um, but it really does, it's, it's the, the shared space in the middle, this, the center line is taken out so that this is shared space. So the, so the cars are, the cyclist has priority and the cars are going around. So it's kind of a, it comes from the Netherlands. It's a design. Uh, yeah, two way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So it's, it's two way, so two way road. So two bike lanes, well, but not, they're dashed, right? And so when the cyclist is here, it's basically that this space is, is shared by cars. Does that make sense? Cars yield the bikes. Cars yield the bikes, exactly. Yeah. Don't the guidelines kind of make the cars move in the middle or not? Yeah, yeah, they move around, but then, but, but then they, but they, yeah, yeah, that's right. But the share, but it's, 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 it's on, it's on the, it's on the car to, to move. There's, if you're interested, I will send you some, uh, there's some good guidance on this, so. On, and it's, yeah, yeah, around, yeah, 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 that's right. Um, I, I thought I brought, I bring this into, this is Minneapolis, they, you know, this is something that you, I don't know if you get as much snow as them, but no. not nearly as much. This, this is not relevant at all? Okay, whatever. No, no, no. It's, it's possible. We just it's possible. Okay, okay. So I just think it's really cool that they, they, they do this, you know, first. You know, this is the, or they're out there at the same time plowing, their, plowing the path. So, you know, maintaining your facilities, you know, snow or not, um, is, is really the mark of, of a great bicycle-friendly community. So uh, bike parking is the next thing under engineering. I mean, you know, I think almost every community can do better at this um, it, because it is often like the thing that is just left behind. It's like, oh, you know, there's a lot of like whiz bang things that you can do that are really fun and, and all that. And, um, and, and bike parking really isn't, it's, it's kind of forgotten. Like, oh yeah, there's bike parking. It's next to a dumpster behind the, the building, you know, that kind of thing. And, and we've all been there as cyclists. And so the best bicycle friendly communities are adopting really good standards. So the APBP bike parking standards, the Association of Pedestrian and Bicycle Professionals, um, ordinances to make sure that, you know, that, that, that it's being done right. Okay, so um, there's good guidance out there. Uh, Change Lab has a model bike ordinance that, you know, bike ordinance that you can, that you can use, um, bike parking ordinance, I should say. Um, and then APBP puts out um, their bike parking guidance. So I think convenient, safe, and everywhere um, should be the, mo the mark of the bike, the bike parking. Um, this is in Bloomington, so bike corrals. Um, something that isn't being done, at least, at least in the last application from Iowa City, but um, you know, reallocating a, a parking space um, or other street space for bike parking. So this is a bike corral. You can get tw you know, 10 or 12 vehicles in this space that you could get one. And um, so the next E is education. So education, we, we, we recommended general public education. So we have, we have some things like the Smart Cycling Quick Guide that you can co-brand and get in people's hands or about a buck a piece. Um, that's one thing, just give people everything they need to know uh, about safe cycling. Um, but also there's some videos that are available. We have just 19 videos on our website that you can download, take, and put on your, in your 
social media or in your, on your websites or whatever um, that, that share the most important bicycle safety messages and confidence building messages. This one's about shifting gears. Um, we have, you know, everything that you can possibly think of covered uh, by these videos. Um, next, uh, again, the, this kind of fits in between education and encouragement, but this is the, the sort of the general public education. This is from Bloomington. I don't know, I've never heard of this character, but it was, in, it was part of their application. Did, does anybody know what this is? Like some sort of social media sensation in Bloomington maybe? I don't know. Um, but cute cat um, that they are using to, to help with their, their safety campaign. Um, and they're you know, um, really driving home the message that you know, we're coexisting on the roads. Little bub. This is a critical mass ride which is, you know, gets its name, you know, uh, play on critical mass, which is like the, the uh, adult, uh, sometimes more aggressive version of this ride. Um, this is, you know, a family bike ride, kids, kids riding bikes and, you know, here signaling and uh, following the rules. And it's a, a great way for people to see kids out on the streets on bikes. So one of the things we think you can do, um, you have local league cycling instructors here that can teach classes. Um, one thing is to really reach the adult population that, you know, the student population um, with you know, short, easily accessible classes, I think. But um, cycling instructors can, league cycling instructors can, can teach everything from the most basic courses all the way up to, you know, really advanced skill courses to help you even if you want to become an LCI, you can, you can learn uh, how to do that. And so smart cycling is something that I think you should tap into having more regular bicycling education opportunities for adults in town. Next E is encouragement. So um, one thing we thought we didn't see, we didn't see in the application and what we think would be really great here is Ciclavia or open streets, which is um, um, closing down streets for bicycling and walking events. So there's like a, a day when you do this. I mean, if some communities do it multiple times a year, there's a lot of great guidance on, uh, online um, where communities are doing this across the country. But it's, um, it's like, a, it's like a, a fun event that I think anybody in the community can get, can get behind. Um, and it, and it, really does broaden, it really does broaden support for bicycling. Here's uh, the Open Streets Minneapolis. Um, this is part of the way that they, they talk about this. Um, healthy living, local business, sustainable transportation, civic pride. Um, again, it's bigger than just the bike. Bicycling advocacy, I mean, you have good bicycling advocacy in town. You have Iowa Bicycle Coalition at the state level um, that, you know, that, that are, are working um, for, uh, for all of you um, as bicyclists. Um, I think it's important also to have you know, a, a channel by which um, there's an advisory group. Uh, so we recommend that there's, a, there's an advisory group that is advising the city uh, on, on what needs to be done and that it's made up of, uh, a it's a representative group um, so that all voices and all neighborhoods are getting, um, yeah, their, their say into, into how, how the, the planning is done uh, and, and how the community develops as a bicycle friendly community. Another thing that we, we recommend is, 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 um, is having a bicycle friendly business program. So earlier today we had a whole um, hour or so talking with local businesses about becoming more bicycle friendly business. I think it's a core part of um, your efforts to having this business support. And um, so that's, that's everything. I mean, there are already bicycle friendly businesses in town. And, and I think, you know, um, like ACT for instance uh, is a really large one. Um, I think working with the hospital maybe to get them and, 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 and I mentioned earlier and I'll say it again now that, that the city itself should consider becoming a bicycle friendly business. So again, back to Bloomington in Minneapolis and, and, and um, not Madison this time, but Bloomington and Minneapolis, um, both recognized at high levels as business, bicycle friendly businesses. So how they uh, support their employees and guests and, and others at, you know, at their location. Um, so, the city, oh, Iowa City should become, you know, the city itself should become a model bicycle friendly business. And, th and that program works a lot like the community program. It's an opt-in application and whatnot. Um, enforcement. So one of the things that was missing from the application, uh, the previous application was a strong connection between the law enforcement community and uh, that advisory group. So making sure that law enforcement is engaged, that you're working together on target enforcement campaigns. Um, like the night is a good program that's already happening, but taking that to the next level. Um, 
ensuring that local law enforcement, you know, are getting trained. There's, there's on, on our issue, there's some good national training programs out there that, that we can get to the law enforcement to make sure that, that we're all speaking the same language and that we're all um, going after the same thing. Evaluation and planning, the last E. So um, making sure that the bike plan that you have, again, is representative, that it's done um, uh, in, that, in that sort of way, but it's also that it's not a big um, long-term plan that is up on a shelf. You know, I'm really glad to hear that y your last plan is five years old and that you know, a lot of it was implemented, um, that you're working, about to work on a new plan, so the, the, um, the proposals are gonna be going out for that. Um, I think thinking, um, I'm glad I actually got to come right before that, and not, you know, that we could have these sort of talks and, and, if, and if I can help in any way, um, you know, help, uh, help you with that, that work. Um, the city of Davis, they're, they have 23% of people riding bikes to work. I mean, again, that same metric or the same, that same, um, uh, resource, you know, the, that same data set, um, they're at 23%. Um, and so their, their latest action plan is called beyond platinum. They've been a platinum for a while. They want to get diamond. We have no diamonds, but I think thinking like that, you know, what are the, what are the clear, you know, targets, setting a high target for yourself and, 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 and something that is also attainable. Um, so back to Bloomington and Madison, um, I, these are two places that previously, um, I think Madison in 2005 or six, and Bloomington in 2008, I believe, all, they've each formed Platinum Task Force. So um, again, really directed at this target, and, um, and uh, Madison made it, they're there. And, um, and Bloomington got to gold and is, and is headed towards platinum. So I think thinking that way, thinking about you know, your next plan in that way. Um, your safety numbers are really good, but I think it's important. Um, I, I, I bring up um, as part of that planning process and, and, the, and, and, and setting targets for yourself and, and um, evaluating um, your work. Um, Minneapolis has a motorist crash um, uh, like a like a study of their crashes um, to sort of see where there are problem areas and, and 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 how those can be addressed. So I think bringing that into it, and then doing your own counts. So this is this is in Madison. This is um this is an automatic counter that you know you can you can see how many bikes have gone by you know when you go by it. Um, it's really cool. There's one I was saying earlier. There's one just like this where I live, and I get like a text that says, "Oh, 2,000 people rode by today or whatever." Um, so it's it's kind of neat as an encouragement device as well. Um, but having, having counters all over and having a regular tracking system um, of, uh, of ridership uh, can be very, very helpful. And then, and then after you have all that stuff, communicating progress to the public. So we, we've seen in a number of places um, uh, bicycling annual reports being done. And um, th this is one from Memphis. Here's the one from Madison. Um, this is their, their last report um, that they got their bicycle-friendly uh, community war at the, at the platinum level on. We also put out guidelines on, on how, to, how to do it, how to, how to, how to you know, sample survey questions, um, how to communicate it, what to put in there, you know, how, to, how to track data over time, how to, you know, wh what the messaging might be. Um, so you can check out that on our site. So th that, that's, my, um, that's my spiel. And now I'd like to ask your, you know, answer your questions, ask your questions. I like to answer your questions now. Uh huh. Um, it's not very bike friendly. Okay. Yep. Well, I, I mean, I don't know if it is or if it is, but they should fly. Yep. Oh, sorry. Sure. Um, so at the, at the hospital, I, uh -huh. I think one of the biggest issues is parking. It, you know, regardless of what what the topic is, whether it's a faculty meeting or students, you know, parking is a, a big yep. problem there. And as far as cycling. You know, I'm I'm hardcore. You know, I've got studded snow tires. I go. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Whatever. I, uh -huh. I feel bad. I didn't bike here tonight in the pouring <laughs> rain, but I, I usually do. Uh huh. Um, there's not a good backup plan for for bad weather. Right. And I think that's the biggest hurdle I see. You know, if you're already paying, you know, fifty to hundred bucks a month for your parking space. It doesn't motivate you to sure. ride your bike unless it's for fitness. Right. And if there were some way that would make it inexpensive to do something else on bad weather days, I think it would be a huge thing to yeah. get more people biking. 
No, that's a great point. Um, so one thing that a business could do is have a guaranteed ride home program, or that could be offered through the, through the city. So in Washington, D.C., where we live, there's a guaranteed ride home program. So if you ride your bike, if you ride your bike to work and you don't have a ride home, there's a way to get home. Yeah, and it's something that the business offers. So you, you, you get a ride, you get a ride. It's, like a, it's like kind of like a, like kind of a van pool kind of thing, actually. And so they, you get picked up. You say, I'm not going to do it. I mean, in places where there's great transit, I mean, it you know, just works. But yeah. in places where it's harder to reach, you know, you can have, it's called Guaranteed Ride Home, and there's information on our website. Yeah, but I think that that's, that's one of the things we would totally propose to the, to, the, to the hospital when they apply for the bicycle-friendly business designation. jump on that I worked 36 years at the hospital and biked you know some years most of the time and less and less as I moved to places that were less bicycle friendly but with the cost of parking it's an incentive to bike if you don't have to right. have your parking permit right. also right. but uh, you know so if you had this alternative for bad weather blizzards and that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, they could get smart and put some money into that. But uh, I am loving your presentation. I, I, I kind of don't bike so much anymore. And part of it is safety because of some things that, you yeah. know, happened in all of these things to encourage, encourage commuter uh, biking. Because uh, I've been here since 1970 and there was a culture uh, 30 or 40 years ago that was like, we're bike racers and we're gonna be in the lane of traffic because mm -hmm. we don't wanna poke along in those little bike lanes. And it made it unsafe for just the regular mm. people to do that. But all of these ideas, you know, it takes such time to phase it in, mm. uh, to build the infrastructure, because I've talked with the city. Burlington Street is an example. We have a, a main artery going to the hospital uh, uh, that is very difficult to safely bicycle navigating, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your way on that. And when they redid that bridge, uh, it, it, you know, that was when they weren't thinking about separate bike yeah. lanes and all of that. So this is great, and I hope the city is getting feedback from you on incorporating this into ongoing plans. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I don't want to make it sound like it's so easy or, um, you know, that it's, it's just so easy to do all this stuff. But um, when you have that, when you have that better way of doing things, you know, when you look at a road, you look at a corridor and you say, no, no, in Iowa City, we think about bicycles, you know, bicyclists and we think about pedestrians when we build roads. You know, they're higher up on the priority list. And I think that that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of thinking that a platinum or a diamond level place is thinking. You're thinking of, you know, not just moving cars, you know, and I think uh, you have to change the engineering problem. Engineers are really great at solving problems. You have to change the problem. The problem, yeah, so yeah, so the, and I think you have, you have a great uh, team, it seems like, and, and, and so I, I, think, I think it's doable, but yeah, not overnight. Yeah. My question's for you, actually, because as a so I'm a commuter, but also a bike racer. So I'm curious yeah. as to how you how you perceive that culture today versus the 30, 40 the, years the, ago. Thirty or forty years ago, there wasn't a culture of commuters. Uh, they, there was no lobby. We didn't we didn't have these discussions as a commuter. And since the and that's why university hospitals there are eight thousand plus employees in one building. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like this is a natural and the parking is terrible for employees. Uh, and then getting it in your mindset that you could uh, uh, you could share. Now I'm assuming that on these roads, if you are one that would ride at 25 miles an hour, you could be in traffic mm -hmm. then and not on a separate yeah. lane there if, if you felt. But then if you want to get your numbers up to, you know, I've been to Davis and that, that is amazing. That's like a different whole culture mm -hmm. where, you know, a 20 or 30 percent of people are riding then a whole bunch of them are going to be poking along in, in you know, 10 miles an hour. Uh, in the, lane and but there's space for that to, mm -hmm. to happen but you know if if someone if that's too slow and my next door neighbor it's too slow for him to ride on those and so he's in traffic but he's moving at traffic speed uh, but uh, hopefully you can have both and 
We want to have the racers be able to race and have places where that's appropriate. But, you know, I went to a lecture on, you know, climate change yesterday, and Connie Mutel was just giving the uh, talk about finding new ways of thinking, and a new way of be thinking is what if 15% of Iowa Cityans uh, put their car away and started biking, and what would be our carbon footprint from that? Yeah. And to do that, we'd have to do things differently. The city is working very hard this year mm -hmm. on uh, Riverside Drive. It's going to begin a project along there to make that much more bicycle compatible, and that's another one that's been very difficult. So. Look forward to it uh, improving a little bit, hopefully both and, because uh, you would like to be able to be in traffic too. Is that right? Uh, you definitely yeah. feel yeah. safe, yeah. I mean, if, like you said, you're 25 miles an hour, sure, you can slow the traffic except for the starting and stopping. Like yes. You start and stop like a car. I'm never right. going to have that strength or yeah. that power. And so, you know, it's mm -hmm. not exactly flowing. Until yeah, until you hit a red line. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just really curious as to how you thought that that, I mean, because I'm sure you see group rides probably on Tuesdays and Thursdays sure. around town, and you know, those are the racers. And so I just wondered how that compared to four years ago. Because you were kind of talking about yeah. how you kind of had an attitude. And I just wondered, I just wondered <laughs> yeah. if your perception of now is better or the same, or maybe, maybe, there, aren't, maybe there aren't as many now as there were then. Oh, I, the, the biking level has gone up dramatically. I was, in, you know, kind of an oddball. There would be a handful of us at university hospitals pulling up 40 years ago, and uh, parking, and 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 it, then it wasn't such a big deal to have enough room to park. And uh, I think they have some covered spots on one of the ramps, but again, I don't know if it's adequate. But again, make it enticing. Yep. Say, wow, this will be easy. This will be effortless. Uh, this is a no-brainer, especially if your car parking spot is a half mile away and your bike parking spot is 100 feet from the door. Right. Uh, then you go, incentive, more people will do this if it's possible and it isn't a blizzard. <laughs> anyway, right. thanks. Thanks a lot. So tell them what goes on at the University of Minnesota for bikers. What's that? Did you hear the present? So, so did you hear the presentation at the summit about the incentive the University of Minnesota gives to bicyclists? That they, that they track ridership and they, they actually pay people to ride. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and also the employees at the, uni oh, at the, right. at the university get a, um, they track your ride. So when you show up, it, you have like a RFID thing on you and it just and says, tell, bing, tell, you then you get, the you get a discount on your, uh, on your health insurance. So. And do you remember the number? No, I don't remember the number. If you ride 50 times a year at the University of Minnesota, you get $40 a month, a month. off your health insurance bill. So that's basically yeah. once a week. Yeah. Great. So obviously there's some costs associated with transferring these streets over. So what type of talking points or metrics do you share with the general public who might not be bikers sure. to get them to buy into um, spending tax dollars on this? That's my first question. And my second question is also talking points with non-bikers on how to drive safely and be uh, friendly and kind of change the hearts and minds of some of the, the drivers. Because I've seen, I, I'm not a, a bike commuter, I bike for leisure, but I, I've seen some aggressive behavior and sure, that concerns yeah. me. So. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so the first thing, you know, a lot of what we're talking about here with the infrastructure improvements is just really paint. So it's on the, on the scale of what you spend on in, in Iowa City, you know, I, I would just tell, I'd, I probably would tell the person from Iowa City, like what, what a lane mile costs when you have to widen that road. And it's enormous. And you could do, I think, um, I think you could do 300 miles of road diets for the amount it costs for like two miles of road widening. It's like insane. So I don't know your local numbers, but that's what I would do. I would, I would find out locally what it costs for a lane mile of road widening because I mean, that's like, that's the thing, you know, it's, and that's, a, it's, it's the hidden cost. I think it's, you know, I think people are like, oh yeah, well we just need another street. And, and what they don't know is that when you, when you, every time you see a bicyclist, you're, you're taking a car off the road that is slowing you down as a driver. So I think that's, that's an important message, you know, and it's been done a good in a couple of places. Um, so a lot of what we're talking about is paint, which, which really isn't expensive. And, um, 
And most of what's being done, like we're, I think, is on a routine repaving and repainting schedule. So you're really, when you, so the idea is like when you repave Clinton Street, is it Clinton Ave, Clinton Street? When you repave that, just stripe it in a better way. So, so what do you say to the people who are driving on that road, like it's going to slow me down? You could say, well, actually, if that road, I mean, this is, it's kind of wonky, so it's not exactly an elevator speech, but you could say that, that up to that road, um, my guess is that it doesn't get the, the threshold of number of cars per day that moving it from four lanes to three lanes will cause any delay. So what I usually say is, you know, that road, and I'll know the numbers, that, that road, if you do it to that, the numbers say that it will, it will perform at the same level for car drivers, it'll make it easier. The bike lanes will get cyclists, you know, into, into safer places, you'll have more flow, and, it, and it's a more than 20% um, crash reduction for all users. Um, as far as behavior, I mean, I think, you know, it's common sense, like how you should treat a bicycle like, in the road as you would any slow moving vehicle. <laughs> like don't throw things at them, for instance, you know, you know, you know, you don't honk, you know, um, they have a right to be there. Uh, but yeah, there's some really good, like, I don't know if Lil Bub from <laughs> Bloomington is the way to go, um, but there must be an equivalent that, that tells the story about Iowa City as, I think you have to add bikes into the story. And so a great bicycle friendly community tells its story of, of bikes in its larger sort of whatever town narrative. You know, we are this kind of place that welcomes these kinds of healthy, great ways to get around. So I think that a lot of it can be done with the city in the way that they talk about their work and that you as advocates can then tie into that and have that speech ready for your neighbors and your friends. So yeah, I'm doing that. And I think the events that we talked about, like Ciclovia, um, that's going to make, that's going to broaden that group. It's, it, it changes from the, we just had like a little bit of an us, them thing, you know, like where people segment all the time, right? We do it all the time. We do it within the bicycling community. It's like a racer versus a recreation versus Lycra people versus, you know, like I'm a transportation cyclist. I'm a utilitarian cyclist. And those things are all real. We, I, that's how we identify ourselves. I think that we together can figure out um, a shared bicycle friendly Iowa City narrative that is like both bottom up and top down that we share, um, that we talk to our friends and neighbors about that. So it's not, oh, oh, are you gonna become a bicyclist? And it's like for the people who don't really wanna become that, they're like, no, actually I'm a, I'm a water skier and I just ride my bike on, you know, to, you know whatever. You know, you know like you, you, want, you want it to be like, I heard somebody from Copenhagen say, you know, like for us, it's like bicycling is like brushing your teeth. It's like, it's just, something you do, you know, and there are going to be people who are hardcore recreational cyclists, racing community, just regular bicycling should be totally normal in Iowa City. It should just be like, oh yeah, I just ride my bike. Yeah, I mean, what's the big deal? And I think so, Ciclovia can help that and so can bike sharing. So we hear, we've heard about bike sharing. I didn't bring it up. Doing bike sharing can help a lot with the people who don't commute to work. Like they come downtown, they come downtown maybe however they get here. Once they get here, sorry, they don't bike commute to work. Bike sharing downtown can help, again, broaden that base of people that are bicycling regular and they will think of themselves as, you know, just, yeah, I ride bike. Um, so there's a lot of people who are just not gonna bike commute, but come down here and they can make short trips with bike sharing. It's important to get station density. I keep saying that. Make sure when you do your bike sharing system that you do it in a way that there, it's, you know, it's a very legible system. So people can, oh yeah, that trip, I can do that trip, you know, easily by this bike share. Um, and we've seen huge, I mean, almost all the cities that have done this, we've seen this kind of thing happen, where it's just, you, know, you have this new set of people that are bicycling regularly that never thought of themselves as bicyclists. Um, so related to bike share, so one of our, I think a big hurdle here is, are the hills. Mm. That there's, there hills? You have, yeah, okay, 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 to go between the east and west side yeah, yeah, of yeah. the river, yep. there's a giant hill on oh, each okay. side. I didn't know that. Okay. And so yep. I know, I only know of one bike share that does e-bikes in oh. um, Tennessee. Oh, okay. It's uh, Knoxville? Knox, Knoxville? Knoxville, I okay. think, yep, 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 has, yep. has e-bike bike share. Oh, wow. And I just wondered think if, about it. that's the only one I've heard of and I think it's successful but I just wondered if you had heard anything else. No, I haven't, but I haven't, but I know that, I know that the, the, the products are changing a lot and it's yeah. just, I mean, it's really successful. So yeah, you're getting version 2.0, 3.0, you know, right. it's like it's 
things are changing. So yeah, I heard about that one, and I could see that opening up a whole new set of people mm -hmm. for the reasons you just said, you know? I mean, right. and again, you don't have to shame those people into feeling like non-bicyclists, right? That's the other thing, it's like, you know, like, oh, you can't climb up that hill on your regular bike? Well, no, I can't, I'm just, but I'm still on a bike. You know, I feel like You're that kind of like that. welcoming yeah. thing like has to happen. So I think that that's awesome. I think it's a great idea. Um, anyways, you had a, you had a, you, you were going to oh, keep, you had another question. Uh, the, I guess the other part is just have you, do you know of any places that have bikes, like non-e-bike bike shares that are hilly and, and have they had any barriers? San Francisco, I think, uh, would be an example. So Seattle has hills. People, and they're I mean, people do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, there are hills in D.C. that are pretty big yeah. and people do it and you really realize how heavy those things are. <laughs> when you're doing it, uh, yeah, but yeah, no, but it's um, again station density, having a good mix of bike and transit too. I think it also helps, you know. Um, but you know, like um, it's nice going down the hill. Yeah, so there, yeah, I think that e-bikes is going to be something that's going to help make that those yeah. those trips easier, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, especially the short trips during the workday. Oh like, yeah, you know, totally. It's hot in the summer. People can take I mean, we're seeing a lot of e-bikes. We're seeing a lot of e-bikes <laughs> in towns. And, like, not the non-bike share e-bikes in towns, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I was in the Netherlands for spring break and, and just loved the bike culture and um, was a little skeptical on, on uh, nobody wore helmets there. Ah, uh -huh. And I looked at the statistics and I was wondering if you know if this is true, but... Um, I, r I ran across a statistic saying the death rate per, it was like 100,000 kilometers biked, huh. was like one point something in the Netherlands, and it's five point something in the U.S. Huh. Is it that I don't know off the top of my head, but I, I do know that there's, everything that I've heard is that it's, it's, it's better to be, it's, it's much safer population-wise to be on a bike than not being on a bike, you know. So the, the, the pollution, I think something came out this week, I was listening on the radio where, you know, biking in polluted cities, it's better to bike than to not bike, you know, the, the health outcomes, you know, it's, it's, it's safer. But on an individual basis, you know, one person has asthma, maybe, yeah, on that individual basis, maybe that person, you know, it's unhealthy or whatever. Maybe this person gets into a wreck and has a head injury. So, I mean, we still promote helmets as, yeah. you know, a good thing, you know, and, and, um, uh, a line of your safety, you know, I mean, you know, but, um, yeah, I don't know the statistics off, off the top of the head, but, but I do, I do, I have heard that, you know, it's, 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 it's much better to bike no matter what than, than for the population. It's healthier overall to bike than, than the risks associated, associated with biking. And, and a lot of that comes with, you know, cycling and, you know, safety in numbers and, and those sorts of things that sort of play into that. But Do you know how much it's the infrastructure? You know, they've got all the nice bike lanes and stuff versus, I'm not sure what their, their laws know. are yeah, as far as, I, I think it's significant if you run over a biker there. Oh, oh yeah, well there's definitely, yeah, there's, your, your, um, the liability is a lot different there. You know, it's, it's the onus is on the driver then, you know, um, and it's, um, yeah, so it's, it, and there's, and there's not um, contributory negligence like you have in some places in the U.S. So it's, it's, um, it's a different legal structure, definitely, and insurance, uh, the way that things work in the Netherlands is different, but um, I think, were you talking about the bicycling infrastructure yeah. helps uh, safety outcomes? I think, yeah, I think that most of the data shows that, yeah, that, that you know, well-built bicycling infrastructure, you know, improves those things, so, yeah. Final question. Um, yeah. For me, anyway. Uh, um, you said the states are ranked. What, what is Iowa? Iowa, 28th, I believe. 28th. You want to talk we, about that, Mark? We've been as we've been as high as ninth. Um, I think we were, yeah, we were top 10 for a while. Um, and, and rankings for the states have changed over the they past have, decade have, or so. Uh, so it has been become much more competitive. Uh, we slipped down to, I think, 26, so we're in the bottom okay. 25, which is not good. Um, but uh, there is some work at the DOT that uh, we're waiting on, and uh, the, the league would be waiting on that will dramatically change our ranking. A lot of states have come out with new bike plans, um, and uh, Iowa has not. Uh, in fact, we're working off the Iowa Trails 2000 plan, if that tells you anything. So it's 16 years behind where it should be. So that's one of the things that the state is working on to try to improve. But um, there's a lot of, lot of things we need to do in that, in that effort for the state. Yeah. 
but the bike friendly state program is a great yardstick for us to compare to the other other states. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you. Yeah. You're watching City Channel 4. On TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.